So welcome again, everybody. I've tested that everything's working okay, so that's good. Um, adaptability. So as Charles Darwin said, you know, it's not the strongest. It's not the most intelligent. It's actually the most adaptable. Now, you might be in a business which is in one of three places. It may be it's closed down temporarily. Maybe all your, all your staff are furloughed. Maybe you're in a situation whereby you've had to really pivot and really adapt and really change your marketplace and maybe your mode of delivery. And we have plenty of examples of that, whether it's been a pet grooming business that move, has moved from supplying adults with face-to-face -face training to supplying kids who are away from school with online training, whether it's a restaurant supplier that has moved to an e-commerce model direct to consumer and therefore changing its complete customer base. There's lots of examples of adaptations going on, maybe a B&B, which has changed to putting up emergency staff. So you might be in that second model, which is you know, changing, pivoting, looking at new opportunities. Or you might be in a business such as uh, IT communications, um, or maybe marketing PR, whereby demand for your services really rocketed through the roof. But whichever those three areas you're in, adaptability is key and the common theme across all of those areas is that working with your team communicating with your team and having to do all of that at home is one of the new challenges of the new situation so that's what we'll be exploring today we'll be looking at uh, some tips and tools across those seven areas but i'll also be challenging you to say do your challenges and frustrations come from the shift towards home working or are there maybe there's some more fundamental challenges in your business so a little bit about me my career has been all about helping brands and teams and individuals and organizations to grow and develop. Now I'm based in the northwest near Macclesfield and I think the figure last year was 14 and a half percent of businesses in this area die every year. So what I'm about is helping businesses to survive. I suspect that mortality rate is going to be higher than this year but I've been working as a coach now for about two years and I've got, uh, act, act, uh, I've got the ability to uh, work with the Action Coach system, which is a proven system and tool set that's been used uh, all over the world to help business owners uh, grow their teams, build their business, um, and make it more efficient and more effective. So that's a little bit about me. So let's get uh, started with some interaction, if I may. You know, I'm sure you're going to lots of these webinars, and I think it's fair to say that a certain level of interaction and uh, enhances the engagement, gives us all a little bit more value and ensures that uh, I can deliver against your expectations. So in the Q&A box, what I'd like you to share, please, what is your biggest frustration or what is your biggest challenge, either at the individual level or at the team level, that has been created as a result of you moving to working from home? What's your biggest frustration about working from home? You can put, as I say, those comments please in the question and answer comments box please. That would be great. And if we could have 100% participation, that would be great. There's quite a few people on this call. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Missing face-to-face -face interaction over a coffee. Okay. Okay, there's a theme here about uh, lacking humor interaction other than via Zoom. Okay. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Aidan. So, actually, it's interesting that all three comments that I've got so far all relate to uh, human interaction and missing that human interaction, which is, which is interesting, isn't it? Even though we've got some technology to get around that. Um, We'll be certainly be exploring that as well and, and how maybe getting that right level of interaction across your work colleagues and, and your situation at home is also a bit of a challenge as well. So we'll certainly explore that. The other interesting comment is not allowing the day to get away from me. So thanks for that comment. Um, there's this different set of distractions at home, isn't there? So maybe it's too easy to get distracted and uh, and maybe the challenges of working from home are, are, are just completely different because you're in such a different working environment, your beliefs, your attitudes are, are very different. So we'll certainly be exploring that as well. So thank you very much for those comments. Any, any questions as we go along, please do fire in, into those. But let me, let me be clear then on the outcomes from today. 
we'll be looking at seven areas as, as promised in the title. So thinking a little bit about mindset, where are you now in terms of your mindset, your attitudes and your perspective on this changing environment. Leadership and virtual leadership, what does that mean and, and how does the impact of working from home affect your approach to, to leading your team? Thinking about the environment, we've touched upon that already, but uh, what are you doing to create that uh, optimum working environment from home? And linked to that, how do you maintain that the point about human interaction? Uh, I mean, lots of people do get lots of benefits from going to work on the social side, uh, and that's obviously lost, so how do we replace that? What about productivity? How do we maintain that in the different working environment? We'll be looking at that. What about new organisational routines, new habits? What have you had to set up to enable great team, team communication and to enable personal productivity? And then finally, I guess the most important point really, bringing all those, th those things together is, what are you doing? How are you measuring what are you doing? And how are you being accountable to yourself and to your team? And how are you enabling your team to be accountable to each other as well? So those are the seven areas that we're gonna be looking at in a little bit more detail. So my hope from today really is to give you some tools, some suggestions, some tips, some thoughts about things that you can put in place either at the personal level or together with your team to enhance that ability to be more productive in this new environment. We'll go through these seven areas, then I'll ask more fundamentally the point about are there things that maybe you should have been getting around to over the last two or three years to put systems in place to make your business efficient and effective that maybe you should start thinking about now as well? And so do your issues come from the fact that you've moved to a virtual environment or are they more fundamental? We'll be asking that question at the end as well. So with that, we'll get stuck into each of the elements, starting off with mindset. So let's be clear about what we mean by mindset before we explore it from a few different angles. Lots of things that have gone on over the last month have been completely out of our control. What is, however, completely under our control is our mindset. So our perspective, our attitudes, and our reactions to this changing environment. And I'm sure you've seen one of the similar models that describes kind of the emotional roller coaster or the emotional journey that people go through when we go through large elements of change. And we saw this back in 2008, 2009, the last downturn. I think it's fair to say it's happened a lot quicker. But nevertheless, the emotional journey is very similar and you may recognize where you're up to on that change curve. And I think it's fair to say that, you know, with overwhelm and fear and anxiety, all those powerful emotional uh, elements do start uh, I'll do kick in at the start, but as we move towards acceptance and problem solving, we probably get a little bit more analytical, a little bit more towards thinking about what we need to do. So I think the first element of mindset is where are you on that emotional journey? The link to that is a little bit of a, a kind of an observation about the human condition. And whenever we have a crisis, part of the human condition is to react in one of two ways, but nearly always in the short term, we start with blame and excuses and denial. And why has this happened to me? Why has it happened now? Well, maybe it's not gonna affect my business. Uh, you know, this is a, a changing all of my plans. I can't believe this has happened. You know, all those completely understandable reactions to this situation. The alternative to say, and that's the victim mentality, the alternative is to take the victor mentality, which says, okay, we are where we are. There's lots of things I can't control. What I can control is how I respond to this. What I can control is what measures I put in place and how do I make those measures accountable to my colleagues? And finally, taking the perspective that wherever my business is gonna be at the end of this year, I should be owning what happens at the end of this year. And it's probably as a result of what I do and how I behave and who I become and what I learn over the next four to six weeks is gonna drive where my business is at the end of the year. So I think that's an important element of mindset. So where is your mindset? Are you below this line of choice? So this is a line of choice. You can choose to be below the line or you can choose to be above the line. Key element of mindset, I think. 
And another model that I think kind of helps understand mindset at the moment, this is work by Ray Bezik, who did a lot of work with um, Ray Ferguson. So I, I thought I'd just drop a few names in the, in the coaching world there. But the idea here is that to perform at our best, we need the right amount of pressure. And, you know, there's lots of, I'm sure, kind of sporting analogies or sporting observations here. You know, people perform best on the top stages. Uh, so they need a certain amount of pressure. But at the moment, you probably agree that for business owners, you're probably on the right hand side of this. In other words, you're under a lot of pressure, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of upset, a lot of anxiety, a lot of disbelief and a high level of pressure. And the argument here is what you actually need when there's too much pressure is to reduce that pressure by thinking clearly, by planning and by acting and having a very, very cool head, having a nice cool head to think things through. Whereas if you've got a low pressure situation, then that's where you need more fire in your belly, you need more emotion, you need more drive, you need to pump yourself up. And it may be that whilst you as a business owner might need to be reacting as if you're on this side, it may be that some of your team may feel if they're working from home, well, the pressure's down, you know, the pressure's off. And maybe thinking about the previous slide there, they can use the excuse of not having a great working setup at home or my Wi-Fi doesn't work or I haven't got the technology. So you may be in quite an interesting situation whereby what you need personally is ice in your head, an ice cooled head, whereas what you actually need to give to some of your team it's a bit more of an uh, emotional boost of pressure. So I thought that was quite an interesting angle on thinking about uh, your mindset in relation to the current situation. And then linked to that is the thought that an ice cool head requires thinking, planning and acting in that order. And this model comes from Clive Woodward's book. Yes, I'm, I'm quite into rugby, but it's not really about rugby. This is much more about team communication and team dynamics. And one of the little mnemonics he has in his book, which relates to the experience of winning the World Cup in 2003, is the idea of teacup, T-C-U-P, thinking clearly under pressure or taking control under pressure. So recognizing that in high pressure situations, what you need to do is think, plan and act. So just a little bit of a further example, further to the previous uh, model. And then a, a build on the thought about ownership and being more specific about the journey that we're going through here and recognizing that again, there's probably three outcomes for any business. One is to just about survive. One is to go through a buoyant period of growth, you know, getting things in place that you actually are in a stronger position when you come through this or we come through the other side of this or it's, I'm sure, a sad reality that some businesses are going to be casualties as a result of, uh, of the coronavirus downturn. And this is building on the point about ownership and owning the perspective and the mindset that what you do over the next four to six weeks is going to determine which of those three areas you're going to end up in come the end of the year. And then a really final thought about mindset is to be your best and to lead your team and to be your most productive in a new working environment, you need to look after yourself. You need to be at your own personal best. So whether that is meditation, whether it's simple things like making sure you have enough water as well as all those extra cups of coffee that you have, making sure you eat well, making sure you sleep well, making sure you take exercise, I think those are all relevant to the idea of having a good, strong mindset. So those are some initial thoughts about uh, mindset. By the way, I didn't mention timing. I should mention timing. I think this will be here uh, for another kind of 25 minutes or so. It depends on how many questions we've got at the end. But I'm, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly just to give you a range of ideas. Clearly, some of them are going to be more relevant to some of the people on the call than others. I want to say a little bit about virtual leadership and the first point I want to make here is that there's been a million and one books written about leadership when it boils down to it what is leadership about leadership is about setting a direction for you and your team it's about saying this is where we want the business to be in a certain amount of time now 
in normal circumstances you might be thinking about five years in current circumstances you might be thinking about 90 days but getting a clear vision with your team about where you want to be being clear about engaging with your team to ensure that they buy into that vision and thirdly making sure that everything is in place to deliver against that vision those are fundamentally the three elements of leadership but there's an extra challenge of course when it comes to virtual leadership when you are no longer co-located with your your colleagues so there are four questions that virtual leaders ask themselves when they shift to the virtual environment actually one, one of the things i'm going to do is to switch my video off because i want to concentrate on what i say and how i say it um it could be a top tip if you're running any webinars yourself um and you may want to write these down this comes from the book the long distance leader first question is how do we know people are really working that could be a concern are people getting enough social interaction i think it's important to uh, recognize and in fact this point was absolutely made in the uh, in the starting point comments there about human interaction lots of people go to work for social interaction so how do you replace that in the virtual environment are you as a leader getting good feedback and if you're not how do you get ensure you get good feedback from from afar and how can we as leaders be a, as effective as when we're in the same location the same office as our uh, colleagues so four interesting questions there. We'll come on to accountability and action and, and, and expectations of, of, of people's staff. So having clear roles and responsibilities, having clear expectations in place for activities and results for people and making those open and honest and, and sharing those. We'll certainly be talking more about that. And the second point I wanted to make about, and we'll come on to talk more about technology, is changing methods of communication. Clearly communication is very important to leadership, but it's recognizing that you're gonna to have to try alternative methods. And that's gonna be important to your ongoing leadership. And the interpersonal side of things, clearly the dynamics do change. You no longer have the uh, ability to have those personal interactions. So what are you gonna do and how are you going to maintain that in this new working setup? So just a few thoughts about leadership and I think some of the answers to those questions will come as we get into more of the details about environment and habits and setting up um, accountability and action points etc. Let's have a think about uh, environment and whether it's dogs barking or competing with your uh, school children for access to the uh, computer you know there's all sorts of new and different frustrations so having a designated workplace uh you know, I, i'm lucky i've worked from home in the in previous uh, lives if you like so I, i'm kind of okay but nevertheless there's still competition for, for access to the study so having you know, family rules about access and uh, what hours you're going to work doing everything to you can to eliminate elements of noise having some family rules about so when the tv and t can and can't be on when you get access to social media, do you need to work on your online meeting skills? You know, that might be an important part of your environment as well. So just being aware that our environment can really affect our productivity. And so designing that and making sure we've got the things in place can be an important element. So that's environment. Then technology, and I think the key point here is well, two key points. Firstly, having the right tool for the right job. Now, clearly, the accounts that Zoom have signed up over the last month or so, I'm sure, have, have uh, been completely through the roof. So using webcams, using video chats, having webinars, having Zoom meetings, it really is the ultimate remote communication tool. Uh, but the second point, I think the overall point is ensuring that technology is an enabler, not a barrier. So whether it's using video and recording messages, whether it's using common file locations, whether that's through Dropbox or uh, OneDrive, uh, having ensuring people have got access to that, clearly that's important. Team sharing tools, whether that's Yammer or WhatsApp or Slack, uh, you know, enabling people and, and, and I guess 
working in the community that I work, I guess, coming back to the people's point about human interaction and social interaction, I guess WhatsApp has been quite a useful tool for that. And of course, you know, virtual beers and, and having um, social interactions over coffees through uh, virtual meetings is, is another way of get, getting that, uh, that personal human interaction. Lots of apps available out there, of course, project management apps. Again, WhatsApp can be used, but something like Trello, I think could be quite uh, useful in these circumstances. So rather than having to dig out lots of emails about a particular project, all the documentation about a project, all the, the right team members are accessible to a particular Trello project. And that's one way of managing uh, projects remotely. <coughs> Excuse me. There's other, ways of managing virtual team feedback. So Tiny Pulse is an example of an app that you can use, you can send out every week to get people's engagement, to get their feedback, to get their frustrations, to get, get their thoughts. So that could be through a series of standard questions or, and, and, or bespoke questions. And you know, using all the tools you've got and all the basic tools, whether it's text or email or telephone and conference calls, making sure you, you're choosing the right tool for the right job. But making sure that none of your team can use the excuse of technology uh, to keep them below that line. So I'd like to kind of move now to the overall area of personal discipline. So when we talk about time management, we talk about uh, self-management because we're not really talking about time. We've all got the same amount of time. It's really about self-management, not time management. We talk about four different skill areas. The first is auditing and measuring how you currently spend your time, which might take you by surprise. And the second one is planning. So how should you be spending your time? And you know, irrespective of whether you're in this new virtual environment or uh, you know, six months ago, you should have a plan in place, a yearly plan, a five year plan, a 90 day plan, etc. So out of that plan comes you and your team's expectations for activities to fulfill your goals. So planning is the second element. Third element is delegation. So what can you delegate and how do you delegate skillfully to the right people at the right time to ensure they do things just as well as you do? And the fourth one, which is really where we're focusing on today, is that area of self-discipline. So how disciplined are you? What new distractions or challenges does this home working create for you? What habits do you have? What habits do you think you need to put in place? And why are so many people not disciplined and think specifically about your team members? Are they likely to be more or less disciplined in this new environment? And if the conclusion is less disciplined, what can you put in place to, to get through those? And we'll have some thoughts and ideas on that. This, uh, these are a couple of pictures I took last year at the Business Excellence Forum, which is an annual conference run by Action Coach. This is a guy called James Clear. He wrote a book called Atom Atomic Habits. And if you're interested in the power of habits and the impact of habits, I really encourage you to read this book, Atomic Habits, James Clear, C-L-E-A-R is his name. Or there's another book called The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg. That's another slightly easier read, read I think, but nevertheless, Atomic Habits, very powerful uh, way of thinking about breaking bad habits, setting up new habits, and thinking about habits from a business perspective or organizational routines. So a couple of the models in the book, one is the point that if we can put habits in place, so habits are routines that become automatic. And if you can improve you and your team by 1% per day, this is the idea of atomic. In other words, small improvements every day can make a huge difference. If you improve by 1% every day, then you'll actually be about 38%, sorry, not 38%, 3,800%, 38 times better by the end of the year. And in this book, he, he has a model, a framework. You might be the sort of person that likes frameworks. He talks about in order to create and deliver against habits, there's four key elements. One is a cue, a cue, you know, make that cue obvious. Secondly, it, that cue creates a craving and make that craving attractive. Thirdly, make sure you respond to that craving uh, and make that easy, your response. Uh, and finally, recognize uh, that you're getting a reward. 
and you can use that to create new habits or you can use that to break old habits but going through that process uh, with your team if you think you need to create a new habit whether that's a, a morning meeting or a weekly meeting i think it's important being explicit about this and talking about the and the main elements of, of creating a, a habit. So it could be about scheduling meetings, it could be about stepping up the level of communication you have with your customers in this new environment. I think it's a very strong argument to say you should be communicating with your suppliers and your, and your customers on a much more regular basis now, so how do you make that happen, what habits do you need to put in place to make that happen. The other thought is about, and it comes back to the points about cups of coffee, lots of knowledge gets shared in the office through informal unplanned interactions over the coffee machine for example so how do you make that happen in this new environment so how do you encourage social interactions where there are kind of side effects spin-off benefits of sharing of, of tacit knowledge across the organization and linked to that how are you clear with your team about the working rules and the working environment and do you give people flexibility linked into maybe their responsibilities for a childcare, for example, or, or homeschooling, uh, you know, so what are the habits and expectations around working nine to five or seven to three or whatever the working hours are that fit with you and your team? So that's a few thoughts about uh, habits. And I'd like to just um, point out, you know, the option to work from home you know, can be a win for everybody, but I do think having habits and accountability in place is very important that the biggest limitation on human performance is not doing what we know we should be doing so i'm going to actually um, take a bit of a risk here and i'm going to switch uh sorry bear with me i am going to uh, reshare my screen Can I just get a hands up, please, uh, that you can see the uh, the spreadsheet? Thank you, thank you, Arthur. Perfect. So this is a thanks, Aidan. Yeah, got it. So you can see that. That's great. So this is, as you can see, if I just uh, close that Q and A box, so there's things on here that I can see that you can't. <laughs> So this is what we call a default diary and, and frog. I don't know whether you can see the, uh, the actual title. I'll come on to talk about what, what we mean by frog in a moment. I'll come back to uh, the idea of accountability. There's, there's uh, well, there's really three different elements to this uh, spreadsheet. The first point is about making written commitments for you and your team to say, what new disciplines do I need to have in place? What new habits do I need to have in place? And what am I going to commit to on a daily basis to ensure I deliver against what I need to deliver against? So having a few of those thoughts and signing up against those and dating those and getting your team to do this, I think is important. And I think a key principle is here is before you, you give ongoing feedback to your team about the new working environment, making sure you, you feed forward so you manage expectations about uh, about their activities uh, and about to the results and the activity levels that you expect from them. So this is a key part of, uh, of self-discipline. And the argument here is a key part of leadership is having goals in place. And the way you have goals in place is you have a plan and you have a vision maybe a five-year plan with longer term goals and then you have a 90-day plan with actions over the next 13 weeks and they have a habit in place whereby those actions that are planned out over weeks are, con are confirmed or, or, or changed into a weekly plan and then those weekly plans are transferred into a daily plan for you and for all of your team members so this is the argument that it's really important that those actions that link to your short-term and long-term goals are specified in terms of responsibilities and all of your team are filling in a default diary which includes three elements. 
it includes coming back to what we we're saying about mindset and exercise and, and personal time maybe that includes um, schooling time with uh, with school children etc it recognizes that some of the elements in here needs to be team communications and thirdly it recognizes that each and every one of us have specific roles and responsibilities, whether that's marketing, finance, operations, delivery, maybe it's specifically to do with any one project. But this tool allows you to, to really build up at the beginning of your week and fill in uh, regular slots throughout the week, whereby you say, right, as part of my responsibility, I need to make sure that the, at the end of the day, you know, I spend half an hour on that finance or at uh, you know, five o'clock every day we agree that we're going to have a team meeting or maybe once a week we have a overall team meeting that goes into the diary and so whether it's as I say personal time whether it's team communication time or whether it's personal work this is a tool that allows us to, to specify a default diary to ensure that those big important things get put into the diary before you get distracted. So that's one element of a default diary, is putting those key elements in there. And then this is more of a, a, a daily way of sharing with the team and maybe having a daily huddle with your team is, is, is a good way of ensuring this happens, whereby tea, everybody lists out their activities for the day from their default diary, they share that with everybody else. And then at the end of the day, um, you can give yourself a score. You know, have I done it in terms of my priorities? How have I done in terms of self-management self and discipline? Have I spent the right amount of time on the right activity? What about my marks out of 10 for focus on family, focus on self, focus on happiness? Obviously, these are completely uh, editable and for you to complete based on what's important to you and your business. And, you know, also on that, you know, sharing maybe the more subtle side, more the emotional side of what's been the best part of today, what's been top learnings, what's going to be your focus for tomorrow, what are your top challenges. So maybe getting into a routine of going through this at the end of every day with all your team members, maybe that's a habit that could be really, really valuable to share and ensure engagement with, uh, with your team. So with that, I'm going to go back to sharing my slides. I hope everybody can see back on action accountability. Can I just get a hands up to ensure everybody can see back on the slides, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so those are the seven areas that I would encourage you to think about in terms of improving productivity in the new working environment. I want to finish off with um, a few, few thoughts. Uh, and this, the main thought here is the point that I made at the outset that it may be that some of your challenges come simply as a result of shifting to a home working environment, but it may actually be that there were some fundamental challenges in your business that have actually got nothing to do with having to work from home, but then the new working setup has revealed some weaknesses and challenges in your business. So I'd simply point out that you know, a nine step system for any business is worthwhile thinking about having in place. And four of these steps relate to leadership and five of them relate to management. And they really tie together a lot of the elements we've been talking about. So do you have a vision in place for your business? Do you know where you're going? Do you have a mission in place? Do, you know, is everybody clear about why they get out of bed in the morning, what contributions you're making to society, to your clients, etc. What's your mission? What are the cultural rules in your business? Are people clear about that? You know, what values do you expect people to live by every day? And it's even more important to have that cultural glue when, when you're not in the same place. Is everybody clear about the goals at different levels in the business? The overall business levels, team levels and individual levels. Those are the four leadership elements. And then is the organizational chart clear? Are you clear about who's doing what? Do each of us have in place roles and responsibilities to be clear about expectations? 
are there key performance indicators available at the overall business level, at the individual team level, and, and at the individual level to make sure people are crystal clear about what activities are expected of them and what results are expected of them. We're a real big believer that it's not people that run businesses, but it's systems. So uh, systems run businesses, people run the systems, and the business owners lead the teams, uh, lead the people. So do you have those organizational habits in place? Do you have those systems in place? Do you have those operating manuals, those checklists, those videos in place to make sure everybody's clear about how you run those organizational routines? And finally, do you have the reporting in place and do you have the communication infrastructure in place to make sure that you can keep those lines of communication open, both with your suppliers and your customers, but also internally within your team? And what does the new working environment mean within that context? So that's a kind of final overview of the key elements that need to be in place, irrespective of whether you're working from home or whether you're all back together in your normal working office. And with that, I'd like to just encourage you, please, to do two things. To firstly, capture in the question and answer box any top learnings you've had from today. Or, you know, what are the three top learnings? And I'd really encourage you to make a note on your pads of link to those learnings, which is the most important learning, and maybe you can put in place three action points against that most important learning. Maybe the second learning, you can put two action points in place. And maybe the third learning, you can put one action point in place. And I would really appreciate it if somebody uh, or, or each of you could share some thoughts about your learnings about, or about the actions that you'd like to take away from today's session, please. In the question and answer box, please, not in the chat box. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Some useful frameworks to apply to work life. Okay, some observations about discipline. Thank you, Aidan. So just as you have a, uh, a think about that and hopefully make some notes about the learnings and about the actions you're gonna take away from today, I'd just like to share uh, couple of thoughts before I wrap up and that is that normally we work with our clients in different ways it could be one-to-one -one coaching it could be group coaching or it could be full days or half days once every quarter to make sure all of our clients have got a, a business plan in place a 90-day business plan in place clearly a lot of us are going through huge amounts of change and, and my mission is to help as many businesses to survive and thrive as possible so I'm offering up to five free coaching sessions uh, every week so if anybody needs help to get a virtual plan in place to get through this downturn to get a cash flow forecast in place which is arguably a key element and maybe a cash flow forecast that includes three different scenarios for when your business might pick up if if, if you're one of those businesses that's been negatively affected how quick that pickup might be what your key costs are, when any government grants or support is going to kick in. So having a cash flow forecast with two or three scenarios in place is arguably an absolute key element to have in place. And then thirdly, any of the challenges you've got in terms of building, maintaining great team performance. If those are any areas that you think you'd benefit from a half hour conversation with me, then you're very, very welcome to, to get in touch and let's make that happen. And let's work together to get through this challenge and this downturn as, as efficiently and as effectively as we can. So with that, I'm going to sign off by thanking you very much for, uh, for joining. I'm just checking any further comments and feedback there. So focus on collaborative uh, technology. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nicola, for that final uh, observation there. So with that, I'm gonna say, keep well, keep safe, have a great Easter weekend. And if you would like a conversation with me, then please just pick up the phone, uh, drop me an email, uh, or let's have a Zoom, uh, a Zoom meeting.
Okay, everybody, thanks again. All the best. Keep well, keep safe. Bye for now.